Good afternoon to you all and happy Friday. How are you doing? Greetings from Dubai. Let me know where you are in the world. Hello, hello. Thank you for joining. Happy Friday to you. Do say hello. Give me a wave. Give me a thumbs up. Thank you for joining. Happy Friday. How are you doing? October the 15th, my mum's birthday. Happy birthday, mum. Thank you for joining. Do say hello. Hello, hello. Happy Friday to you. How are we doing today? Do give me a wave. Give me a thumbs up. Let me know where in the world you are joining from. Greetings from a very sunny Dubai. Beautiful sunny Dubai. If you're in need of some sunshine where you are, I will send you uh, some my way. Hi, Tracy. Happy Friday to you. Hello, hello. Thank you all for joining. How are you doing? How is your family? How is your business? How is your team? Do give me a wave, say hello. Let me know how you are and where you are. How are things? How are things where you are? How is your October going? so far is autumn has autumn come to wherever you are it is absolutely glorious here really really lovely weather after a very very hot summers very 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 pleasant now so as i say if you're in need of some sunshine i'm happy to send some your way do let me know what have you been working on this week has it been a good one i hope that you are in fine form i've had a really good week actually my second book the business of freedom how to escape employment and build a business that works for you went to the editor on Monday I'm so excited very very excited and we are on track for a January publishing date which is what I've been targeting so that feels like a really big achievement I also decided to face my fear of going to the gym without a personal trainer I know totally irrational right I made myself a bit of a routine on my phone and I've been doing it every day. First time in my life that I've ever gone and done all the machines and all the weights myself without any help. I was really worried that the that I would sort of lack motivation, I wouldn't be able to push myself, but I really haven't. I, it's been so lovely to listen to my own music instead of all of the gangster rap that they tend to play in the gym that I go to. So how about you? How are you doing? What, what have you achieved this week? What are you proud of? Uh, don't forget to look out for those little things, those indications that you're on the right track as you build your business. Thank you to all of you that have been referring friends and colleagues to me. I really do appreciate it. Lots of new joiners to this community. Welcome to each and every one of you. I'm really passionate about serving you and giving you lots of great value, uh, not just in these weekly lives from wherever I am in the world, but also in our Ask Me Anything slots, 3 p.m. UK time every Monday. So do feel free to post your questions or challenges into this group. Let us know where you're stuck or what questions you have. I really hope that you and your business are thriving, but if you're not, then that's okay. Please do let me know what support you need. I want you to know that you are not alone. Okay, enough chit chat, let's get going, shall we? Welcome to my weekly live at 12 noon UK time every Friday, where we talk about how you can simplify, grow and enjoy your business. Whether you're just starting out or you're several years in, whether you want to build a nice lifestyle business or you're chasing world domination, I am here to support your journey. Last week, we were looking at staying the course. I shared with you some of my thoughts on how you can stay on track and how you can stay motivated, especially during those, those tough times that we all have, right? If you didn't get a chance to join me live last week, then you can find the recording in this group. All of my lives are organised into guides. We have simplify, grow and enjoy your business. So do let me know where are you stuck, what questions do you have, what challenges are you facing? I do want to remind you quickly of something that I shared last week, which I think is worth repeating. When you're feeling great and when you're feeling confident, that is when you look ahead and that is when you plan. That's when you tweak, you refine, you test. But on those days when you're having a tough time, and we, we all get those, right? That's the time, head down and focus on what you can get done. 
don't ask yourself too many questions. Don't live, lift your head up too high or try and look too far ahead. Don't try and plan. If, if today is too much, then how about just this afternoon? What can you accomplish in the next hour or so? When we're having a tough time, it's head down and just do the work. Don't try and plan, don't try and strategize, don't look too far ahead. Those are the things that we do when we're having a great day, when we're feeling confident. So just remember that because as soon as you start doing something, as soon as you just persuade yourself to, to be focusing on doing something, you'll feel much, much better. Trust yourself, okay? And, and do reach out if you need any support. Okay, so today's live, has been inspired by several of my clients who are who are really struggling with how to be a good leader in in these uncertain times this week we're talking about your leadership style whether you're managing a large or a small team or even if it's just you in your business what kind of leader do you want to be you you might not even think of yourself as a leader and i often find this with my clients particularly when they're just starting out in business like well i'm not a leader i don't have a team but your clients are looking to you for your for guidance and so are the people around you the people that you work with even if they don't work for you full time they're still looking to you as the leader they're looking to you for guidance so how do you embody your values how do you set clear expectations and how do you show up in your business every single day as we move towards winter Let's focus on you really becoming the leader that you want to be, particularly as we start to think forward to next year already, 2022. As always, today's live is practical and simple. It's designed to give you some concrete things to think about, but also some actions that you can take today. I'm going to share with you some ways that you can think about developing your own leadership style. I'm also going to talk a bit about remote working and how it's affecting managers and leaders. Sound good? Let's get started then, shall we? If you think about what leadership is, a very broad definition is that it's really the ability to inspire and organise other people to achieve a shared goal. And typically that would be over a uh, over a defined timeline on a, or on a schedule. Leadership skills are important in any organisation, whether you're in a small organisation or a large one. They, they're all about facilitating strong teams and the ability to get tasks done efficiently. But because that's quite a generic definition that I've just given you, your leadership style might differ a lot from somebody else's. You might demonstrate so-called soft leadership skills like patience, empathy and deep listening, while other people might demonstrate strengths in risk taking and decision making. And whatever your natural strengths are, developing leadership skills that really align with you and who you are is the way to become more effective as a leader in your business. And leadership skills aren't just for your working life, they can also really have a positive impact on your personal relationships. That's because as you learn to improve your leadership skills, you, you learn about communication, you're building connections with other people. And this is that, that EQ, right? That emotional intelligence. And whether you're negotiating a big sales deal or negotiating chores with your significant other, it is essential to be able to influence other people. Developing leadership skills also allows you to grow as a person. It's, it's a really empowering process. It's all about harnessing your natural energies, harnessing your natural talents to inspire and energise other people. It's also becoming more and more attuned to your own strengths and your weaknesses. And that self-awareness is then what you can apply to help you control your emotions, help you increase your focus, help you get in flow um, more of the time. So we can think about two steps, if you like, in terms of finding your leadership strengths and weaknesses. Broadly, I would put this into two steps. And firstly, we really need to think about your leadership style. And by that, I mean the sort of the pattern of your actions as perceived by other people. So what's your philosophy? What are your skills? What are your attitudes in practice as you are as you are leading for your for your team, for your customers, um, for your co-workers? 
There are broadly four different kinds of leadership. There, there are many different types of leadership, but you can put them all broadly into four different categories. And I'm just going to quickly run you through those four different categories. So the first one is what we call autocratic or authoritarian leadership. And this is where we centralise power and decision making in ourselves. We give orders, we assign tasks and duties without much consultation at all. We take full authority and we assume full responsibility. Autocratic leadership is ultimately negative it, because it is based on threats and punishment. Um, subordinates just do as they're told effectively and the leader doesn't really care for their opinions and he, do, he or she doesn't allow them to influence his or her decisions. The autocratic le leader believes that because of his or her authority alone, he or she can decide what is best in a given decision, in a, in a, in a, in a given situation, I mean. So, so their decisions are um, the only ones that count in, in any given situation. Autocratic leadership by definition is based on close supervision, micromanagement you might call it, clear cut direction, so not much delegation, just lots of direction, and command, so commanding order um, based on a sort of a superior, inferior, that kind of a relationship, right? Ultimately, I'm in charge and you need to do what I say. It's, the positives are that it very much facilitates quick decisions, prompt actions, we get on with it, and unity of direction, right? It's only one person that's, that's giving the marching order, so it's very clear. It, it doesn't require a lot of delegation, but it does make people want to rebel, uh, some more than others. Um, it is likely to cause a lot of frustration, and it also slows down and inhibits the growth of the capacity and the capability of the rest of the team. Because what happens is the team work as hard as is necessary to avoid punishment or consequences. But there's no thinking outside the box, there's no going above and beyond, it's just head down and get the job done. They're therefore producing the minimum that is required to escape the consequences, to escape the punishment. This leadership style is really not very effective, especially in small businesses where people take the risk to join a small business in return for having much more say and much more influence over the decisions. So we see this kind of authoritarian leadership management style in large companies where maybe people get paid quite a lot to put up with that crap but it doesn't work in small companies. <clears throat> and it doesn't really work because it's fear-based. And so people will put up, up with it for a certain amount of time, but they're never, they're never gonna stop looking for alternatives, right? They're always gonna be on the lookout for, for alternatives. And so your attrition and your turnover is likely to be quite high if you use this style of leadership. So the second style of leadership is what is called democratic or participative leadership. And this is the opposite really. So this is about decentralizing authority. It's very much characterized by consultation and participation in the formulation of plans and policies. So it's very, very collaborative. The leader here encourages participation in decision making. He or she leads the subordinates, leads the team, mainly through example or persuasion rather than fear and force. Sometimes the leader is serving as the moderator of the ideas and suggestions. So they're like an umpire if you think about it. This, this leadership style um, favours sharing responsibility with, with team members and that fosters enthusiasm and engagement in those people. The employees or the team members feel that management is interested in them as well as in their ideas and in their suggestions. 
and they will therefore come forward with more suggestions for improvements and therefore you get capability and capacity in the team improving and increasing. And so advantages for this style is higher motivation and improved morale for sure, increased cooperation and collaboration with management, improved job performance, um, reduction of grievances, reduction of absenteeism and reduction in, in turnover. So this is a much more positive management style, um, more difficult because you have to cede control. Um, some people would say that it's slower because you're having to consult and collaborate. Um, but in smaller businesses, it's much, much more effective than your autocratic or authoritarian leadership. We can take that too far, though, um, and some people that I have worked with before who maybe are struggling a little bit with confidence will fall into this third type of leadership, which is called the laissez-faire or the free reign leadership. And this is leaders who actually avoid power and responsibility. They don't want to interfere. They pass on all of the responsibility for decision making to their subordinates. And, and then they really take on a minimum of administration or initiative in administration. You know, they're, they're, they're really trying to delegate as much as possible and absolve themselves of all responsibility. They're not really giving any direction and they're really allowing the group to establish its own goals and work out its own problems. And here the leader's actually playing quite a minor role. The idea is that each member of the group, and this is what this type of leader hopes, is that each member of the team, when left to himself or herself, will, will put forward their best effort and that maximum results can be achieved in that way. If I just let my, um, my people get on with it, they will do the best that they can. And I've coached some people like this um, and it often comes down, as I say, to a lack of confidence. They think that they are empowering other people, but actually they don't want to take responsibility. They don't really want the buck to stop with them. So effectively, what we're doing here is, is, is acting as, as an umpire, if you like, but not giving any opinion, not giving any direction, not giving any control. Um, and so really the organization is gonna flounder. Um, you don't get many successful entrepreneurs that employ this style of leadership successfully um, because people need direction, they need, um, they need guidance, um, and they, they need to be consulted for sure, but just letting everybody do um, what they wanna do is not, is not very um, effective. There was um, an experiment that was conducted amongst the Boy Scouts um, in the US in, in the 1940s. And, and what it found was that autocratic leadership really roused um, antagonism and frustration and even anger in the group um, and a lot of hostility towards the leader. And what they found when they trialed the democratic approach, um, the absence of the leader, if you like, made, made little difference. While in autocratic group um, groups, the productive work dropped off immediately. So when you've got a democratic group where people are being consulted and there's collaboration, if the leader is absent for a day or two, work continues, right? Because people are motivated and they continue to work and they know what they're doing and they're enthused and they're engaged and they feel connected to what they're doing. But when you have an autocratic leader, as soon as they leave, even for just an hour or so, then everybody just stops working. Um, it, it, they stop working to the minimum level, right? So you still have to do the you, have, you still have to do the minimum, but there's no motivation, there's no engagement there. And so what the, the autocratic leader fears is that people are going to take the Mickey. Um, and actually, by being so autocratic and domineering, that's exactly what they get. As soon as their back is turned, that's exactly what happens. People are like, well, you don't care about me, so I'm not going to care about you. There is a fourth style of leadership, um, which is the paternalistic leadership. And this is the leadership style where the leader assumes an almost sort of um, parental um, uh, kind of role within the group, if you like. Uh, and what, what paternalism actually means is that Papa knows best. 
the relationship between the leader and his group is the same as the relationship between the head of the family and the members of those family of that family the, the leader guides and protects his team as if they were members of his family and that actually you do find this style of leadership a lot in family businesses as you might expect and as the head of the family um, the leader provides their subordinates with good working conditions and fringe benefits um, and it is assumed that the workers will work harder out of gratitude and this style of leadership um, has been very successful in Japan as an example due to some peculiarities there in the Japanese culture that actually lends itself to this more paternalistic leadership style. It's also widely prevalent in small companies in India as an example. However, this paternalistic approach doesn't work very well in most countries with mature adult employees because um, most in most cultures we don't like to be looked after by a godfather we instead of gratitude we actually start feeling resentful and antagonistic because it's quite controlling it's papa knows best yeah and people really don't like um, other people assuming that they know what's best for us and so it can it can generate a lot of antagonism and resent and resentment um, just a word on the democratic leadership um, it's the one that is most likely to win the loyalty of the group the laissez-faire leadership that i mentioned a moment ago um, they have a friendly attitude towards the leader that just lets them get on with it um, but suggestions and productivity is very low when people are just left to their own devices and not given any guidance so those four leadership styles, hopefully they all make sense to you and you will have tendencies in one area or the other. So you'll probably be able to recognise um, maybe some autocratic authoritarian um, tendencies. I certainly do, but also democratic and wanting to collaborate. Um, I think that laissez-faire one is interesting, it's certainly if you have struggled or do struggle with your confidence, that might be something that you tend towards. And then that paternalistic leadership, I certainly recognise that. I, I recognise that certainly early on in my career, I was a bit like a mother hen, which I think is, is, is sort of going towards that paternalistic or maternalistic, if you prefer, uh, leadership style. Understanding your leadership style really opens the door for building management skills that are in harmony with your true nature because we're not trying to change who you are we're not trying to uh, tell you the right way or how you should do things but it's about being aware of your own natural tendencies and how you can build leadership skills that really enhance your your performance and your relationship with your team because ultimately this is about putting yourself in flow and also your people to get the best out of them so once we've, that's all step one, once we've identified what our leadership style is, then we need to honestly assess ourselves. So when we know what our strengths and weaknesses are, we can, we can start addressing them, we can start making decisions about how we want to behave. Um, but in order to sort of pinpoint those weak spots, if you like, those things that maybe we're not so good at, we do have to be really honest and it's really good to ask for feedback from trusted individuals um, about their opinions on your leadership skills. And some areas that you could think about focusing on or asking questions about is, as an example, building empathy. Are you empathetic to other people's needs and feelings or do you focus solely on yourself and how you're feeling? Putting other people first is really essential to building rapport and inspiring them to follow you. So to be a good leader, you really do need to put yourself in other people's shoes. You do need to build up empathy. And empathy is definitely something that can be learned. A lot of people think it's something that you have or you don't have, and that's not true. You can learn to be more empathetic. 
Uh, communication skills, another area that it's worth kind of digging into and getting feedback on. Um, setting expectations and boundaries. How clear are you when you do that? Do you provide really clear goals and directions? Do you keep people in the loop? All of these things are part and parcel of creating and leading effective teams. Then decision making, how good are you or are you perceived to be in terms of making tough decisions? It's really in those moments of decision that your, that your destiny, that your direction is really, really shaped. Are you confident in your ability? Are other people confident in your ability to make tough decisions? Or do you second guess yourself? Are you plagued with self-doubt? Micromanagement is something that many, many business owners uh, struggle with. And I've been very open um, in these lives that that is certainly something that I have struggled with um, early in my career and, and occasionally still do. Um, if you find it difficult to let go of day to day tasks and you tend to find yourself micromanaging, it's really one of the things that um, annoys and frustrates um, and demotivates people more than uh, many, many other things. So if you have a tendency towards being a control freak, as I do, it really is something to pay attention to and get feedback on from the people that you're working with so that you're really very aware of when you're doing it because you might not realise that you're being a control freak. Giving and receiving feedback, super important area for, um, for improvement or to look at when you're assessing yourself. It's, it's tempting for many of the leadership styles that I just mentioned to you, it's tempting to focus only on the positive. We don't want to piss people off, we don't want to upset them, you know, we don't want to give them difficult news, but ignoring problems within your team will not lead to business success. And actually, if you're just sweeping things under the carpet, people will lose respect for you. So an ability to be able to deliver constructive feedback is really, really an important aspect of being a good leader. So there's some areas that you can think about getting some feedback on in terms of assessing yourself as a leader. Now I want to move on to looking at some specific ways that you can improve your leadership skills. So once we've done that assessment, we can make a, we can make a plan. We can make a plan in terms of how we are going to improve our leadership skills. If you've identified a lack of confidence, for example, as a weakness, then you can take some steps to build up your confidence. If you've identified pure com poor communication, then you can practice effective communication techniques. So that assessment is really important because then you can make a plan for improving. Now, just to note um, a word of warning on this, I am not telling you that you need to improve on your weaknesses. You know me, I'm all about playing to your strengths, not focusing on your weaknesses. However, if you do want to improve on your leadership skills, then it is worth looking at those areas where you're getting feedback or you're identifying that you could do with improving. Be passionate. Nobody wants to come and seek advice or counsel from, from someone who doesn't care, right? So it is really important that you are passionate about what you're doing. Now, most of you watching are business owners, and so I'm sure that you are passionate about what you do, but passion, Passion is effort, right? It takes effort to be passionate, to really care about what you do. It's about never giving up. Um, it's about um, innovating. It's about moving forward. And if you are enthusiastic and passionate about what you do, it will be much easier for people to feel inspired and want to work with you. People respond to those who are eager to learn and to grow. And so showing a passion to develop yourself um, is really then going to be contagious and other people are going to want a part of that. Your desire to improve and to help others improve will be very clear to your team um, and that will also help them see you as a leader. 
And modelling great leadership is really important. Um, you, we, I think we've all ha maybe had examples of people that like to tell us what to do, um, but they behave in a different way. So it is really important that you walk the walk. Um, you know, it's not uh, do what I say, but not what I do, right? Your actions really do speak louder than your words. So modelling and showing other people what good looks like, showing them exactly what you'd like to see them doing in terms of behaviour. Um, the strong, It's really the strongest message that you can send to your team is to model the behaviours that you would like to see. Um, if they can, if, if, if this person could do that, then so can I. That's what people will think, right? So they need to see that it's possible what you're talking about. So the next point is don't ignore your strengths. As I said, it's really important. Yes, we want to look at our weaknesses and we want to improve those, but ultimately we really want to play to our strengths. So if you are naturally a great communicator, if you are naturally very empathetic, if you are naturally really interested in people, then make sure you play to that strength. If you are very structured and organized, um, if you if that's the, the side of the, of the coin that you are, where your strengths are then play to that yeah make make sure that people can leverage your ability to to bring clarity to situations and to structure things so do do make sure that you are playing to your strengths and you're not focused not just focusing on your weaknesses and we when we talk about areas for improvement we think of we think of weaknesses but actually you can always improve on your strengths as well we can always get even better at the things that we're good at. So that's definitely something that I would uh, recommend you think about as well. One of the very important ways that you can improve your leadership skills is to get good at setting concrete goals and executing them demonstrably. So in a way that people can actually see. Setting goals, doing what you say you're gonna do, showing up, leading the charge, walking the walk, as I said. Um, setting those goals and working towards them is such an inspirational thing to be around. Um, and, and it comes back to that demonstrating the behaviours that you want to see. So setting plans, being ambitious, and then going all in and in inviting other people to join you um, is a great way of improving your leadership skills. Admitting mistakes, it's so important. We all make mistakes, we're all human. Being a leader is not about being perfect and shiny, it really isn't. So when you fail, when you make a mistake, when you don't hit a goal, admit it, deal with it and move on. Don't look for scapegoats, don't give yourself a hard time, certainly don't give anyone else a hard time. What are the lessons that we can learn and how can we move ourselves forward? Inspiring other people. So it's important to be really positive, right? And, and I know that that comes naturally um, to some people more than others. I know that I'm naturally a very positive person. It's maybe easy for me to say, be positive. But if you're the sort of person that naturally um, sees all the mistakes and sees all the faults, that's definitely something that you can work on, is trying to see the positive in every single situation, because that is so much more inspiring for other people to be around. And then finally, finding your higher purpose. So really connecting with why you do what you do um, is also really inspirational and um, encouraging other people to do that as well will make you a great leader. So how can you really connect with your higher purpose? What are you really trying to achieve in your life beyond, beyond your business, but really what do you feel like you're here to do? What do you feel like you're here to achieve? And trying to get in, in touch with that um, is also will make you a better leader because people can sense that when you're around somebody that has a real sense of purpose, a real strong sense of purpose, that can be really, really inspiring. And you want to engender that in your team as well. And you do that by leading by example. So there's some thoughts on how you can think about your leadership style, but also how you can um, improve on it. So do let me know what, what are your thoughts about about leadership? What are your thoughts about leadership styles? What are your thoughts about what skills you could improve on 
Um, what are you looking to, yeah, what are you taking away from today? Do let me know in the, in the comments what's what's resonating most with you what's coming up for you as you as you listen to me talking about about leadership and leadership styles what is your next step in life and in business what do you need to make you feel more confident uh, do get in touch with me book in the clarity call if you'd like to talk through any of this I'd like to just give you some concrete steps, I guess, to sort of summarise what I've mentioned today, some concrete things that you can do. What I would suggest you do firstly is review those four leadership styles. Which one, which, which one do you have more of a tendency towards? Do you tend towards more autocratic, autocratic dem, domineering? Are you more democratic, collaborative? Are you more laissez-faire? Or are you more paternalistic? You'll probably find that you are a combination of those things. But how does that play out in your leadership style? How would you like to take your leadership style forward? Next, make an honest assessment of your strengths and weaknesses and get some feedback from the people that work with you, from people that you trust to be honest and open with you. Um, people that have worked with you before, maybe people that are working with you now, try and get some really honest assessment and be really honest with yourself about your strengths and weaknesses. And thirdly, you know what's coming. Take some action. What specifically, out of all the things that we've spoken about today, what specifically would you like to improve on? What specifically are you going to focus on in the coming days and weeks to make you a better leader? Please do let me know how you get on with this and do get in touch if you need any support or you want to talk it through with me. Don't let yourself get overwhelmed. You can do this. I'm going to close up today's live with two quotes about leadership. The first one is from the great Stephen Covey. What you do has far greater impact than what you say. And secondly, from the 34th President of the United States, Dwight Eisenhower. Leadership is the art of getting someone else to do something you want done because he or she wants to do it. So how will you lead? How do you lead? How do you want to lead? How do you stay the course? Are you ready to face what needs to happen in your business? Let's get you in the driving seat of your business and building intentionally towards what you want. Decide what is really important to you and to your business and stick to it consistently. Building a business is really tough. It can be a long, hard road. So make sure that you're building something that is really meaningful to you that will sustain you through the tough times. Be intentional. Say no to those things that don't serve you and the goal that you want to achieve. And as I pass over to you, that's really what I want you to take from today's live. What is the outcome that you seek? What is the result? What is the goal? Put your energy into getting really clear about that but allow yourself to do things in your own way. Yes, of course, learn from me, learn from others, but take all of that learning inside yourself, synthesize it into you. And when you bring it out, it has to work for you. It must be congruent with who you are. If you want to build a huge multinational business, then go for it. Fantastic. I'd love to support you. But if you just want to do your thing, then fantastic. Then go for it. That's absolutely OK, too. And I would love to support you with that. Focus on listening to yourself and ask yourself, what do you need so that you can spend more time in your flow? And don't forget that the opposite of flow is friction. And so if you find that things are really, really difficult, if you feel like you're kind of banging your head against a brick wall, focus on getting some clarity. Take a step back and focus on getting really, really clear. Get some objective advice, Get hire the services of a business coach, give me a call. Take some time to look at what you're doing and where an easier path would start from and lead to. Ask yourself, what would a business that really works for me look like? Do let me know your thoughts and questions on this or any other topic relating to how to simplify, grow and enjoy your business. What area of business would you like me to speak about next? If you haven't already claimed your free copy of my first book, The Real Entrepreneur, then you can go to therealentrepreneurbook.com. If you prefer an Audible or Kindle version, you can find those on Amazon. Do check out the leadership section of my book for more on developing your own unique style. 
get the foundations right and you can build from there. I hope that you have a lovely weekend, whatever you're doing and whoever you're doing it with. I wish you a really happy and peaceful time. And as always, if you want to talk, you know where I am. Please remember to be where you are in the journey. You don't need to know it all and you definitely don't have to do it all. And please be kind to yourself. Take care, stay safe and keep in touch. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye for now.